In this video, I want to give a little bit of practical advice and go through some examples of how to balance chemical equations. Now, I can't stress this enough. Any problem that you're going to do in this class that involves a chemical equation, it has to be balanced. We talked about this from the standpoint of the law of conservation of mass. Any equation that's not balanced doesn't agree with the law of conservation of mass, so it's not valid. It's not a valid representation of what's really going on in a chemical reaction. So uh, any question that you have, if you want to check to make sure that the equation is balanced first, um, sometimes it'll tell you to balance the equation first. Other times the problems may not tell you to balance the equation. It's going to be up to you to know that in order for you to even start thinking about anything else, this chemical equation has to be balanced. So let's go through the an example of the equation that we looked at at the end of the previous video, um, just kind of going through how you want to think through these problems. Now, these, these types of balancing equations problems can be very frustrating for students. Um, oftentimes, they're just really wildly guessing and checking, and then they end up going down a rabbit hole that they, <laughs> they can't recover from. So I really think the key to, to making sure you don't get overwhelmed and frustrated is really just trying to keep track of what you're doing, right? Until you get a lot of experience doing these problems, it's gonna be really crucial for you to just make sure that you have some systematic way of bookkeeping what you're doing so that you can keep track of everything throughout the the problem right so so the first thing you want to do is when you see a problem like this you want to take note of how many atoms of each type are on the reactants and product side respectively so that you can identify your imbalance and make strategic uh, you know, changes to the stoichiometric coefficients in order to balance it, right? So I, I recommend that, you know, you actually just write out, you know, on the reactants, on the reactant side, in this, in this reaction, we have three different types of atoms involved, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, right? On the reactant side, we have two carbons. This is what we're starting with. We've got six hydrogens, and we've got three oxygens, right? So, so that's what we got on the reactant side. And then on the product side, we got one carbon, right? Just coming from CO2. Uh, we have two hydrogens coming from water and we have three oxygens, right? So now we can identify where the imbalance lies. Initially, the only thing that's balanced out is the oxygens, and we have to solve these imbalances uh, in the number of carbons and hydrogens, right? So basically, we'll just start adding stoichiometric coefficients and then updating this little table that we made so that we can keep track of what we're doing and make sure we're kind of getting towards the right track. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is note that there's this imbalance between the carbons, two on the reactant side, one on the product side. And what I'm going to do to, uh, to solve that imbalance is to add a 2 in front of CO2. So if we add this stoichiometric coefficient of 2 in front of CO2, now we should update our products here, right? So we added this 2 to CO2. So what that means is now we have two carbons on this side, but we don't just change the carbons, we also change the oxygens, right? So now we have, uh, no, so now we have two times two here, that's four, right? So we've updated this guy, now we have five oxygens, right? So even though we solved one imbalance, we created a new one, but you know, we, we keep plugging along here, right? So we have a two in front of CO2, the next thing I'll note is this imbalance between the hydrogens, right? Six on the reactant side, two on the product side. So I can actually um, solve that imbalance by adding a three in front of H2O, right? So if we update our numbers again here, right? So this now updates this guy to, uh, to be six, Right, so that actually solves that imbalance, right? Six on the product side, six on the reactant side. But again here, we change the oxygens, right? So now this ox the number of oxygens goes up from five 
to seven, right? Because now we have three here, we got four here. So that's a total of seven oxygens on the product side. Right, so we solved both the imbalance in the carbons and the hydrogens, but now we've created an imbalance in the oxygens by because we solved those two. So uh, how can we solve that? So we can go over to the reactant side. We notice that this O2 is along is alone, right? And this is really always very useful whenever you're balancing a chemical equation. When you have a species like this that's by itself, that means you can change the number of oxygens on one side. Um, without changing anything else. So what we'll note here is that we got three oxygens already. On the product side, we got seven. So if I can make this six oxygens, now we're balanced, right? And I can do that with a stoichiometric coefficient. I can say that this guy is three, right? So now if we have three O2 molecules, that's six oxygen atoms, plus the one from ethanol. So now we can update this guy from three to seven, right? So now we know that our equation is balanced, right? And like I said, just some form of bookkeeping can really help you out here uh, to make sure that you're, you're keeping track of what you're doing throughout your solution to the problem, right? So that way it doesn't just completely feel like, you know, random guess and check, right? You, you wanna be able to set up this type of table where you can identify the imbalance and make really smart pointed um, changes to the stoichiometric coefficients to try to actually balance the equation. Now, um, let's look at a different example. So let's up the ante a little bit here, look at a little bit of a more difficult example. Well, may not end up so difficult in the end, but we'll see. So uh, this problem says lead hydrogen arsenate, which from our naming, right, that's this guy, lead hydrogen arsenate, an inorganic insecticide is used against the potato beetle. It is a product of the following reaction. Right. So again, sticking with our, you know, kind of practicing naming here. Right. This guy would be called lead nitrate. Right. Uh, specifically lead to nitrate. Uh, this guy would be arsenic acid. Right. Uh, since this would be an arsenate ion, that would be arsenic acid. Um, and then this would just be um, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen nitrate. Right. So, um, so now if we're looking at this chemical equation, right, we want to balance this guy. First, we want to figure out where the imbalance is. So let's create another table like we did in the previous example. So for the reactants, right, and we got five different types of atoms uh, flying around here, right? We got, we got lead, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, <laughs> arsenic, right? So we, we got a lot going on here. So we definitely wanna make sure we keep track. So on the reactant side, we got one lead atom. We got two nitrogen atoms. We got 10 oxygen atoms, right? Cause we got six from these two nitrate ions and we got four here. So that's 10 oxygen atoms there, right? For hydrogen, we got three, right? That's coming from uh, arsenic acid. And we got one arsenic atom in the reactants. Now for the products, right, if we're keeping track here, we got one lead atom. Uh, for nitrogen, we got one nitrogen atom. We got seven oxygen atoms, two hydrogen atoms, and one arsenic atom, right? So again, seven oxygen because we got four here, three there. Um, two hydrogen atoms, one from uh, lead hydrogen arsenate and one here, right? So we got, we got two hydrogens there. So when we look at the imbalance, right, we see that the imbalance is with the nitrogens, the oxygens, and the hydrogens, right? Now, this could, you know, really, you want to try to make a very smart you know, decision here to start the balancing, right? So we know that lead is good, arsenic's good, right? We, we got those guys balanced. The only, you know, the only imbalance here exists with the nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms, right? So we have a, a compound in the products that's completely composed of all of the atoms that are currently in balance. So that's kind of how, what I mean by making sure that you're making a, a smart, you know, a guess towards what the solution is, right? And in this case, if we add a two here, so let's say we add, 
whiting, adding white on white. If we add a two here, a two in front of HNO3, then let's update all of our atom numbers, right? So if we add a two here on the, on the product side, now we have two nitrogen atoms. If we multiply this oxygen atoms by, th by two, then we have six here, four here. So now we got 10 there. And then our hydrogens go up by one from two to three, right? So by just adding a two in front of HNO3, we've balanced this equation since we you know, zeroed in on what the imbalance was by bookkeeping all of the atoms, right? So what looked like a beast of a chemical equation actually turned out not to be that difficult. You just add one stoichiometric coefficient in front of one compound and you balance the entire thing, right? So, so like I said, this a lot of the frustrations that students feel with balancing chemical equations usually can be quelled, if not completely eliminated, by just making sure that you're keeping track of what you're doing and, and you know making actual pointed attempts and changes to these stoichiometric coefficients in order to actually get to the solution.